This video is brought to you by CatBeast.com. Design your own custom snapbacks and hats. It's evident I'm harder than whoever got a problem, man. We got them automatics for whoever got revolvers. Before Vince Staples hit number two on the US rap charts with his debut studio album, Summertime 06, and followed it up with Big Fish Theory. Another story of a young black man, my hand, take it easy, homie. Before getting signed to Def Jam, working with Odd Future, and featuring on tracks by artists like Common, Tyga, and Gorillaz. Sky's falling, baby, drop that ass for it, crash. The sky's falling, baby, drop that ass for it, crash. Before his five star Yelp review of a small chicken restaurant in Kentucky, led to a massive boost in sales with lines going down the block for real when i can make a nigga go wait in line for some chicken that's some influence after an outraged christian mother went viral for her reaction to vince staples north north but the rapper actually leapt to her defense as she faced online criticism bullying and songification folks need portions hoes need abortions This misunderstanding of community leads to miscommunication, which we should convert into a progressive dialogue. Finn Staples grew up in Compton and Long Beach, surviving serious poverty and a father in prison. A shy kid with straight A's, he had plans to go to college and eventually grad school, but his life would begin to get derailed when he was falsely accused of stealing a cell phone and kicked out of school. After discovering his mother had fallen seriously ill from cancer, his life started to spiral out of control. But he got the chance to turn his life around when he began crashing on the couch of Sid the Kid's recording studio and hanging out with the members of Odd Future. What's going on guys? My name is Michael McCredden, documenting the life and career of Vince Staples prior to fame, here for you on Before They're Famous. Now you guys have been asking for this video for over a year. I've actually received a few death threats because, well I waited so long. I don't know why I, I did that. I'm sorry. I hope we're cool. No drive-bys. Alright guys, let's get into this video. And that was nothing against Compton, I was just, in general, yeah. Isn't beef a part of hip hop? It's fucking corny. Did you think the Cube NWA beef was corny? It's fucking corny. Jay Z and Nas was corny. Fucking corny. Vince Jamal Staples was born on July 2nd, 1992, in Compton. He grew up there and in the Ramona Park area of North Long Beach, California. Vince, the youngest of four siblings, raised by a single mother after his father was arrested on Christmas Day when Vince was in the first grade. On the brighter side of things, Vince participated in the Snoop Youth Football League. While this was obviously a mainly positive experience for him, he seems to have some residual resentment for what used to go down on the gridiron. I played the Carson Colts every year. They used to cheat. Wow. Them and the Mission Viejo Cowboys used to cheat. So I just want everybody to know that them kids are cheaters, and I hope they never prospered in life because they took a lot from me as a kid. After his father's arrest, his mom moved the family to a back house owned by his aunt. The lower rent allowed his mom to afford to send Vince to a nearby private school, Optimal Christian Academy. Great name. Vince was a straight A student. He won awards for his writing and had a serious interest in current affairs and politics. At the time, he had no ambitions to become an artist in the music industry. He was a shy kid with a stutter who had asthma and hated speaking in front of the class. On top of that, as he put it, my whole family was gang members. I never knew what I wanted to do besides that. Following elementary school, Vince opted to attend Mayfair High School in Lakewood, California. This school is recognized as a California Distinguished School, the highest award a California high school can obtain. And Vince chose to go to this school so he could stay out of trouble. He had plans of going to college and grad school, but he got in serious shit when he was getting caught with a phone that wasn't his. Now, despite multiple witnesses, including the kid who actually owned the phone, claiming that Vince was innocent, the school used the alleged theft as a pretext to get him expelled. The police identified the then 13 year old Vince as an active gang leader and he was charged with numerous felonies including threatening a witness, aggravated assault and armed robbery. The school and police then agreed to drop the charges if Vince left Mayfair. From there, Vince jumped from school to school, eventually ending up in Atlanta in 2008, where he stayed with one of his sisters. After eight months there, he returned to the West Coast and found his mother growing seriously ill from cancer. From there, he moved in with a family friend in Long Beach and started to go down a bad path. He got wrapped up in street life. Vince said of this time, I wanted all of it. I was like, fuck it, I'm here. I might as well do it for real. 
It all could have ended there, but in 2010, a friend, Dijon Samo, he brought Vince to Odd Future Studio to meet Sid the Kid. While Vince had rap and fun before, he had never taken the art form too seriously. But he quickly bonded with Sid and other Odd Future affiliates and began crashing on the studio's couch. At the time, he was the only non member of Odd Future working at the studio, but he would soon collaborate with some of their standout artists. In 2010, he recorded E Par with Earl Sweatshirt, a controversial song he has since disavowed and she's kicking and screaming begging for me to fucking stop it look you know it's not rape if you like it bitch so sit down like a pretty hoe and don't fight the shit holy f those are some pretty fucked up lyrics oh you may have noticed that i can't really swear anymore which is totally fucked up like f the f bullshit anyway let's continue i've got to collect myself because this is this is what our youth is being subjected to. Anyway, around the same time, he met his manager, Corey Smith, through a mutual friend who helped to encourage Vince to take his music seriously. Numerous other collaborations would follow, and Vince would drop his debut mixtape, Shine Cold Chain Volume 1, on December 30th, 2011. Winter in Prague would follow the next year, as would his debut single as a lead artist. Vicodin. Kevlar's over the heart, the master scar whenever I pops not being here. Took him for a couple years, now my nigga stuck in here, so what? We love it here. Through Earl Sweatshirt, Vince met Mac Miller, who gave him a number of beats to work with. This would soon turn into Vince's breakout mixtape, Stolen Youth, released in 2013. Shine Cold Chain 2 would follow the next year. Corey Smith then negotiated a deal with Def Jam, with whom Vince would go on to release his EPs, Hell Can Wait in 2014, and Prima Madonna in 2016, as well as his studio album Summertime 06 in 2015 and Big Fish Theory, which dropped in 2017. You still find these these, these great personalities and these great success stories within, you know, the small pond that is, you know, our music. As for the rest of the story, well, that's pretty much it because this is before they're famous. My name is Michael Craig. Thanks for checking out this video. I'm sorry it took us a little while to put this one out there, but you know, we just dropped that album, so we we're like. We got time. Let's get it done. Plus, a lot of people are like, think he's mysterious guy. So now you know. All right. See you guys in another video. Boom!